let's show you how to recreate the shield task in Among Us. As you can see here, when you click the red buttons, they it all turns white and tells you that you've won, just like in Among Us. If we start it up again, you can see that a different number of buttons are red. And again, if you highlight them all, it says task completed and you won. All right, let's show you what I have in the hierarchy. Most of these can be found by right clicking, going to UI and just selecting either panel, image or canvas. And the other ones can be found just create empty game object. That's all we use in this um, task. Create a canvas and then we create a panel when we attach the script to this one. Our script is named shields and we'll get into the script after we go through the rest of the hierarchy. We have an image and I just added a sprite with the turtle in it. As you can see, my turtle is missing feet and an outline, but I don't want to get too carried away with uh, creating the assets. Then we have a dodecagon, which is a 12 sided polygon. And that's this outside border. We have uh, when you're creating your own sprites, you can put a border on your sprite and just make sure you save it off as a PNG so the opacity will carry over to Unity instead of having a fill image and a um, outline like I have. So this first empty game object with the grid layout group has our middle buttons. You can, I, when I click through it, you can see these get highlighted in the scene view. Then our next empty game object, again, another grid layout, we'll have our buttons on the left side. Then our third empty game object, again, an added great grid layout group with the remaining two buttons. The reason why these have an image on them is because I actually created two different sprites, an outline and a fill. Um, you don't necessarily need to do that. You can just create a sprite that has the opacity lowered in the fill and an outline for that to get the same uh, hexagon image or dodecagon. Okay, and then we have an exit button and a start button. And that's, that's all you really need to know for the hierarchy in this, for this uh, task. Okay, if you notice any mistakes in my code or things that I could have improved on, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to add it to the post for this video. The post again for this video is in the description of this video. You can find it or up in the top right corner. Uh, it's linked to it as well from this video. Okay, we have an array of game objects called shield buttons. These are gonna hold all of our buttons that we click that turn white and red. Okay, then we have an array of ints called shield buttons int. We have a Boolean that checks to see if something's failed and it's automatically set to true. We have a game object that holds the shield game panel and this is what's gonna be enabled and what has the script attached to it. We're gonna drag the panel in here to reference that from the hierarchy to the inspector. Then we have just a game object that's task completed. It will be the text that pops up. We can even add an animation later if we wanted to. We have another game object that holds the dodecagon, the 12 sided polygon. And then we have a list of colors and we don't use all of the colors. I just, in this script, but we do use some of them. And I just copied and pasted this from the last script I showed you guys. I added a clear white and a clear red. The fourth number in this, the fourth number is the opacity or the alpha channel. If you turn it down for 255 is solid and zero is invisible. So we want somewhere in the middle of that and you can test what you like and then set the opacity the alpha channel to what you want in the code. Okay, on enable gets called every time the panel gets um, gets enabled. We call a function called enable interactable buttons and that's we've called, we named it down here and we essentially set all the shield buttons to interactable and we set that equal to true. We will later, later in the code, we'll disable the interactable buttons and we'll call that function, but we do the opposite. We set all of the buttons equal to false. So we just run it through a for loop. 
Okay, we're setting the dodecagon color, the image color, to red to start because automatically it's not going to be uh, completed and we only want it set to white when it's completed. The dodecagon transfer, transform, um, because I did it in two different sprites, again, I need another line of code that grabs the child of this first uh, game object and then grabs the image from that child and turns it to the clear red. And you can get away with not doing this if you just have one sprite. Not doing this uh, line. Okay, in this for loop, we check the shield buttons array length and we run through the for loop for the entire length, changing I to access every single shield buttons int array. And we set the random range to zero or one. And you can see that when we hit play, when we have the panel selected, that's where our script is attached to. We, we just grabbed the script, dragged it into the inspector. Uh, when we hit play, you can see this shield buttons int array changes the values, either one to zero, and if it's a one, it will be red, and if it's a zero, it'll be white. To initialize this array, we set in the inspector the number to seven, and it will give you the, um, or the number of elements uh, for your code to use. So when you type in seven, it gives you zero through six elements to use. Okay, we have another for loop that runs through the length again for the shield buttons. It checks to see if the shield buttons int is zero, and if it is, then it changes the shield buttons component, the image component, to white. And this second line, again, you don't have to do if you have one sprite, but since I have two, I have to grab the child that has the other image, the fill image, to a clear white. Then we have another if statement to check if it's one, and we'll change it to red. We'll grab the shield buttons array that it's going through on the for loop. In our next function called shield buttons clicked, we have a parameter that takes in int button, it takes in the button number that was clicked. I'll show you how that how it does it through the inspector. Then we have an if statement that checks to see what shield buttons button array was clicked to then change if the if the color's red then we'll change it to white so we get the component it's an image component and then dot color is to access the color that we want to change it to so with the if if it's not red then it will be white and we'll want to change it to red again this second line is not needed if you have a single sprite I have two sprites that I need to change the colors on. One is the fill and the other is the outline. Then we have a function called um, are all buttons white? And this will just be checked to see when a button is clicked that it will run through to see if all the buttons are clicked to be white. So let's show you where we get this uh, number from that gets brought in here. If we go to the if we go to like our first button, which is this top middle one, um, its number is set to zero. And essentially we drag in the game object that has the script attached to it. We go down to our shields and it's an integer that shield buttons clicked. And then whatever button the number is, this first one zero, you know, we want it in there. And you can see that by going to these different buttons. They're in order one, two, three, four. If you change these numbers up, they won't uh, correspond to the right button and it will change a different button's color. Our next function is called are all buttons white? And we set our Boolean failed to equal to false. If you think about it, every time it checks, it, it shouldn't have to check again if it is true, but um, just in case to make sure it resets with the beginning of a game, it's set to false whenever it's checking. Okay, this for loop runs through our buttons again. As you can see, this for loop is used a couple times. It's very effective to check different things. And in this one, we're checking to see if all of the button's colors are um, if any of them are equal to red. 
And if they are, then we set failed equal to true, and it breaks out of the for loop because it doesn't need to run through the entire for loop. Again, as soon as it finds a red button, failed is true. And so we send it back to the user to keep clicking buttons. If failed equals false, this is our win scenario. We disable the interactable buttons so they can't turn the, the buttons back off. We change the dodecagon component to image component to, to white. And I do it again to the child because we have two different sprites like I've been saying. And then we set the task completed set active to true. And then we close the panel and we can put a timer so that it displays the text for a little bit and closes the panel. One second is pretty fast, so I just put two. Thanks for watching this video. Please leave a like and a comment. And also, if we've helped you in this video or in past videos, we hope you become a member on our website at infogamerhub.com. 